Crank length is a very important part of bike fitting, which is often overlooked. In hindsight, I was probably running the wrong length crank for many years. And if you do ride the wrong crank length, it can have big ramifications in terms of your comfort on the bike and therefore your performance. In today's episode, we're gonna cover everything to do with crank length that you might need to know. Mine's longer than yours. So the crank is the arm that the pedal fixes to. Uh, it comes in a multitude of different lengths. It's available from the big three, Shimano, Rick Campag, and SRAM, as well as some aftermarket jobs like this Croda, more on that in a bit. Typically speaking, you they'll start at 165 millimeters, go up to 170, 172 and a half, 175, and that's kind of where they top out. The, 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 the kind of commercially available cranks typically come from 165 to 175. That measurement is taken from the center of the spindle, center of the bottom bracket axle, right the way to the middle of where the pedal joins. I've damaged this crank. That's all right, it's only a cheap one. The crank length that the bike comes with is probably a pretty good starting point because the crank length on an off-the-shelf bike scales with the size of the bike. I think that that scale is slightly disjointed in that you're still seeing 52, 54 centimeter bikes with a 172 and a half millimeter crank, which in my experience is probably a little bit on the long side. I feel those sizes probably ought to be running 170, which is definitely the best selling crank that I tend to sell. So if you think that the average height of, you know, average height man is like five foot nine, 170 mm crank is definitely the be my best selling crank. 165 for women is probably our best selling crank as well, actually. The optimum crank length for an individual is dictated by the functionality of that individual. So if you've got, and this is where a lot of the studies that you'll read about crank length and optimum crank length will fall flat on their face because they're carried out on an elite athlete, very, very functional, got high levels of mobility, high levels of strength, high levels of flexibility. They're then using that data to sell to consumers who typically lead much more sedentary lifestyles, they're less functional, carrying a few extra pounds as a result of sitting down or standing up for a reason for a long amount of time hips tend to get a little bit tighter so frankly there is a trend for going shorter being better but it isn't always better if the length of your crank scales with the size of your bike does that basically mean it also scales with rider height absolutely i think that the the, the bigger problems actually lie in the extremes. So if you've got someone who is kind of like below five foot two, a 165 millimeter crank is too is too long. And at the at the opposite end, if you've got an individual who's got like I had guys recently who've had like one meter inseams, like 175 mil is just too short for them. Typically, not always, but the bigger the bike, the longer the sorry, the bigger the bike, the bigger the rider, the longer the crank. If the crank is too long, what it's resulting in is hip closure. So it's going to you're going to struggle to get over the top of the pedal stroke. And we found that even a reduction as little as two and a half millimeters can have quite profound differences in improving a rider's pedaling dynamics. It can impact saddle interaction, which frankly can have uh, an effect on the rest of the on the rest of the position. If you have a really really excessive crank length, if you've got a very small person running a 175 millimeter, you could end up with a situation where you've got quite a lot of loaded flexion going through the knee, so it could put quite a lot of stress on the knee joint. I mean, I have had that recently where I've had an individual who is like you know five foot six, five foot seven, running 175 mil crank, and that was causing big problems. But it's relatively uncommon. You do you tend to see it on very, very budget bikes where you've got um, you know, a 54 centimeter bike or you know, a kind of medium sized bike, it's got a 175 millimeter crank. That's a bit of an alarm bell. What you're kind of looking for is a, 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 an extra small to small should probably have a 165 millimeter on it. A small to medium probably ought to have a 170 or a 172. A, a large to extra large is gonna have 175 millimeter. If you've got something that is not kind of falling within that range, something's probably amiss. If your crank length is too short, what I've come to find, and I've found this through experimentation, through comparative testing, because we have an adjustable crank on our jig that uh, enables us to actually test it in a controlled environment, it typically results in the rider kind of spilling over the crank, falling into the front of the bike. So although it doesn't necessarily have a negative impact on pedaling dynamics, it can have an impact on bike handling. And I think one of the kind of myths I wanted to dispel with this video is that shorter is not always better. We've got, you know, if you've got an individual who's like six foot six, riding 165 millimeter crank, I would be very surprised if that was optimal. I sell a reasonable amount of 180 millimeter cranks. I sell a lot of 150 to 155 millimeter cranks. I tend to see a lot more smaller people 
when you're talking extremes of, of, the, of the spectrum, I see a lot more short, short people than I do very, very tall people. There's been quite a lot of talk about shorter always being better because it opens up the hips. Now, the thing is there are other ways of opening up the hips. You can reduce the stack of the pedal by using certain pedal systems. You can use a thinner, a thinner sole in the shoe. You can increase the stance. You can reduce the saddle setback. There are lots of ways of improving hip function without simply just reducing the crank. Uh, like I said, I feel that when you go too short, you start to lose the leverage element of it. And I come to find that you sort of spill over the front of it into the front of the bike, which means it has adverse effects on the handling. I mean, yeah, absolutely. One of the benefits of reducing crank length is that you keep the, the terminal extension of the leg the same at the bottom, but the hip angle closure at the top of the stroke is reduced. So it basically improves your ability to come through the top of the stroke. But ultimately, yes, if you're reducing your crank length by five millimeters, you probably ought to raise the saddle height by five millimeters. If someone's saying to you, you should be riding a shorter crank, but they don't have the means of testing it, <laughs> why? You know, you've got to be able to test it. So, you know, ways of testing would be to either very expensively buy lots of different cranks. There are some cranks out there that, that are actually adjustable. I think you know, Lux Z crank, for example, which I don't think they even make anymore, has, has some adjustability. I can't remember, there's another, there's another brand that makes an adjustable crank. Uh, but in, it, we, we adjust crank like every bike fit, uh, just because we can. Not, not, it's not about selling cranks, it's just about understanding what's right for an individual. And that's why we don't, we don't just sell 170s, we don't just sell 170s, we sell you know, a plethora of options and that's why we carry options from 150 millimeters all the way up to 180 millimeters. I'm actually in the process of, of having some cranks made because you, know, you, can't, you can't get, for example, you can't get 180 millimeter cranks easily. I recently had a guy who had to buy a Jura Ace power meter because it was the only 180 millimeter crank I could find. Yeah, poor guy. Um, but but it's true, you know there there aren't there aren't enough options. Shimano is definitely going in the right direction. So for uh, 105 Altegra and even Dura Ace, you can now get a 160 millimeter crank. Thank you, Shimano. Uh, Campag, but don't do anything less than a 170. No, they do do a 165. So you want uh, shorter? That's what you're looking for, really. I want strong? more options. I don't necessarily want shorter. I just want there to be more options for people and, and I think going so people think 155 millimeters or 150 millimeters is kooky it's not if you've got someone who is you know outside of the realms of the you know the, the kind of bell curve of averages you know, if you've got someone who is you don't even have to be that short five foot three five foot four 165 millimeter crack almost always is too long this is the thing it, it's all about the specific needs of an individual you can't generalize with this stuff that marks the end of today's video thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please put in the comment section down below and i'm sure james will do his best to answer them equally if you'd like to book a fit with him it's based in richmond in london and you can do that through the website, which I'll also link down below.